All right, welcome to an overview of the basic match position feature set. I'm really excited about this set of tools. I've been using them in production for the last year or so, and they've been a huge time saver in setting up 3D content. The palette is small and also responsive, so it can easily tuck away into your individual workflow. And make sure to remember that you can hover over any of these buttons to just remind yourself of basic functionality as well as some of the alternate functions of each one of these buttons. I'm gonna be showing you some basic match position features as well as some fun stuff using Element 3D and also a neat trick using a one node camera for parallaxing scene setup. All right, let's dive right in. The first button is create null at layer position and it is as simple as that. You select a layer and create a null and there it is, matched right at the position of the shape layer. The same thing holds true for 2D objects. We'll select it there and we get a null right at that position. Also, these nulls are named the same name as the layer selection, and they also respect the in and out points of the selection that they were made from. If nothing is selected, then we get a 2D null right at the center of our composition. A couple of options to the create null at layer position is if we select Alt, we'll parent the newly created null to the selection, and Shift Alt will parent the selection to the newly created alt null. So we'll just click Alt here, and we get that null parented to the star, and conversely, shift to alt, we get the star parented to the null. So just a few helpful options there for quickly creating nulls in your scene. All right, let's move on to match position. And it is as simple as selecting two layers and clicking the button. And those two layers are now at exactly the same 3D position. This is especially helpful because once layers are parented to others, you can't just directly copy their rotation coordinates. So I'm gonna take this pentagon and parent it to the star here and we'll just rotate this star like this. Now I can't just take the rotation values of this pentagon and copy them over to this rectangle because the pentagon has now inherited the rotation values of its parent. But with match position, we can select these two regardless of this, these parented structures and go ahead and click that and they'll line up exactly in 3D world space. So super helpful for more complicated parenting setups. The function will also detect the 3D state of the target layer. So I'll select this 2D green rectangle and the star, and it automatically converts the rectangle to 3D. The opposite is also true. We'll take the star and select the 2D circle as a target, and now the star turns into a 2D shape right at the circle's position. There are a couple of alternate features as well. So by clicking Alt, you can match position and rotation, then parent. You can just do the position only, or you can do the position and parent. So lots of options there, depending on your workflow. I'll show you the value of the link position, scale, and rotation features in the Element 3D sample. And I'm gonna skip over to the distribute positions, which I'm really excited about. So this basically distributes the middle selections between whatever first and last selections you've made. So I'll select these three, click it, and there you go. You basically distributed these layers in 3D space. So obviously it works across all angles and vectors. So we'll select these three again, click distribute, and we have a clean distribution between them. We can do the same thing with all of these shapes actually. And we have an even distribution. Super helpful. Now if we hover over the distribute positions button, we can see that by selecting alt, we can set a midpoint percentage distance between just three layers. What that means is if I take just three layers, I can tell it exactly where in the range to distribute them. So I'll make sure that my middle selection is right in the center, select Alt, and now we're able to enter a midpoint percentage between one and 100. If we set this to 25, it'll go ahead and set it to 25% of that distance. The default is always 50, so if you've only selected three, you're gonna always get it right in the center. We'll just try that again, go up to 75, and now we're right at that three-quarter spot. This is really, really helpful when you're setting up any kind of parallax scene. And you might take your front layer and maybe you have some kind of background layer that you've set way in the distance. And now if we have any elements that we wanna put right in the middle, we can be sure that uh, they'll be showing up exactly at 50% of the way. So just a great way to block out your scenes with some sense of control over distances that can otherwise feel pretty arbitrary. All right, next. Let's talk about how to link 2D screen space values to 3D position coordinates. This is super valuable for infographic labels and icons that need to maintain consistent sizes in relation to 3D layers and 3D camera movements. And that's where we're gonna use link position, scale, and rotation. So here I have a simple element 3D scene, 
And what I need to do is expose some nulls that are attached to the 3D object that we can now track in our After Effects 3D space. So I'll select our Element 3D layer, and we'll use a couple of these utilities uh, to help us out here. First, I'm gonna to go to the Utilities tab, and I'm going to generate a 3D null from a 2D position. So I'll select this little button, and let's go ahead and put a dot right here on Bezel and I will not orient to the surface, and I'll hit Generate. And so Element 3D has now given me a null that understands and sees this uh, particular 3D model with our After Effects camera. So I'll just go ahead and name this Bezel Null. And let's do a couple more. We have the face and the band. So I'll click, uh, let's see, the face right here, Generate, and then we'll do one more for the band. Generate. Great. So we'll name this face null and band null. Perfect. Now we have 3D nulls that we can link our 2D content to. And it's as simple as taking our 2D content. And by the way, I have some hidden layers here. So the text is just parented right to this line. But you can see that the anchor point of the lines is set to where I want it to connect to the 3D position. So I'm going to select the band line and the band null and simply link the position. Now, no matter where I rotate the camera, this 2D layer, which remains a 2D layer, is tracking that position in 3D space. I can track, I can zoom in and out, and that position will always give me 2D screen space coordinates. So let's do the same thing with the bezel. We'll take the bezel 2D and the bezel 3D, link that position, and the same thing with the face. Face and face null link position. Match position is really stable and you really can't mess it up. If you make a mistake, uh, so for example, if we do the bezel over to the face, it just replaces that spot. No need to worry. Uh, you can always take it back bezel to bezel and we'll link that again. If you want to remove the linked position properties, uh, the expressions are on the 2D layers themselves. So we'll go ahead and click bezel. And in this case, we'll just alt click. That removes all the expressions and this is back to just a normal uh, 2D layer. So real easy to attach and detach these expressions. So let's put that back, bezel and bezel and we'll link position. And there we go. We have that uh, nice tracked 2D content. Now every once in a while, we may also want to link the scale so that we do have some sense of depth between our 2D and 3D content. Because right now, as soon as I bring this back, uh, these 2D layers are obviously not changing. And that could be a feature as well. This is a nice to be able to have these infographic labels kind of retain their scale all the way through our camera movement. But if we wanted to uh, see that depth a little bit, we can as well. We'll just add the uh, scale expressions. So again, we'll select face and face null, and this time we'll select scale. And this is just adding expressions to both the scale and the position properties, in case you wanted to know what was happening under the hood. Um, and now we'll just reset the scale of face. So this is cumulative math. So we could just bring this down and we can even keyframe these. So everything is uh, kind of built so that you can make cumulative decisions based on you know your scale and position. We can also take that position and, and offset it if we wanted to. So really flexible that way. So we'll just set this to, let's see, maybe something like that. Now you'll notice that as I move the camera, this scale is actually changing. So it is calculating that perceived change in scale based on the distance to camera. But it's worth noting that while the 2D object is dynamically at 116.6 scale, the keyframed scale is still 32. So this can be keyframed up and down. This is important to know because I'm gonna match the other uh, scales at 32 as well. So I'll just click out and that expression is updating to the real-time scale that uh, it's giving us based on the camera. We're going to go ahead and click band and select our null. Also link that scale and bezel and the bezel null and link that scale. Once again, we'll take these two and we'll set all of these to the same scale that these are at. So that's 32 and 32. Oops, that one is not linked. There we go, 32, there we go. And now we have uh, a really responsive, almost 2.5D, I know we're already in 2.5D here, uh, but just kind of another level of being able to have our 2D elements interact with our 3D elements. Super powerful. Lastly, the link position is really helpful for 2D effects 
coordinates that can't exist in 3D, but that need to track 3D layer coordinates. So a good example of that is, for example, the, the stock radio waves or like the null light factory plugins as well. Let's use radio waves to give a good example of that. And let's have radio waves track uh, this little light here. So we'll do the same thing, give ourselves a null. So we'll generate a position from element 3D and we'll just click there and generate and we'll call this the light. And we'll go ahead and make a new solid and we'll apply the radio waves to it. All right, so just basic functionality is straight up radio waves. Let's go ahead and just change this to our light color and maybe put this on add. Okay, great. The other thing I'm gonna do is switch this to each frame. So as it moves, it tracks a little bit more cleanly. So the only thing we need to do now is connect the producer point, which is a 2D coordinate system, to our 3D light null. So we'll twirl this open, find the producer point, select it, shift select the light null, and collect the, connect the position coordinates. And now that will always be emanating from that spot. Let's go ahead and set a couple of keyframes for this camera. And there you have it, just a super powerful, easy way to link 2D layers to 3D screen space. And while we're at it, let's use match position to go ahead and add an, a light in relationship to our, our model. Again, we'll select element 3D, come over here to our group one, group utilities, create group null, and this will just create a general null for our, for our whole object. So now this is our watch layer. This is really helpful because uh, whenever I add lights, I'll just turn off these radio waves for now. I wonder where in the world are they? So I'm just gonna add a light here and we'll say uh, point light, hit okay. It puts it way out here in the distance somewhere. In fact, let me go out into my scene here. There it is, kind of just way out there. I just feel like I want a little more control over it. So I'm gonna select point light and now select watch and match position. And now our point light is right where we know it, we can control it. Just maybe bring it out here like this. And just getting a little sense of control over where things are at in 3D space is uh, one of the reasons why I really love this feature set and why it's such a huge time saver. All right, last, I wanna show one more little bonus feature for the link position button, and that's the one node camera feature. And as you can see, it says, if the first selection is a one node camera, its focus distance will link to the target layer's 3D position. Let me show you what that means. I have a little demo here of some office uh, type superheroes coming down and they each have their you know, own little superpower here. So one thing that would kick this up a notch is to add some depth of field. Now, I usually like animating with a one node camera because I just feel like I can control it a little better. So what I would usually do is create a null that the camera can focus at. So I'm gonna select our superhero number two and create a new null at layer position. We'll just call this focus null. This isn't parented to anything. This will be our kind of the direction of our, of our depth of field focus. And so I'm gonna select focus and camera, right click camera and link focus distance to layer. And it gives us an error. Camera cannot be a one node camera. So After Effects doesn't let you automatically link uh, its focus distance to anything. But match position gives us that option. So now all I have to do is select my camera and then my focus layer and connect link position. And now if we twirl down to the focus distance, we now have an expression there that helps make that happen. So now we'll just turn on our depth of field, hit okay. And now we can just use a match position button to focus wherever we want. So we'll select focus and superhero three null. And now he's in focus. And now I can animate that focus null. Now I've already given myself some markers here just for the sake of time. Right now I wanna change uh, that focus position. So I wanna start on our girl here. So we'll start there, set a keyframe position there. And at the end of this particular movement, we'll click focus and come on, come over to our number one, set focus there, move ahead. At this point, I want to come back to this character match position, there she is. We'll set another position keyframe there, and then at this point we'll focus on our third guy with the bullets. Super easy. Go ahead and add some easing here. And now, 
And there you go, a nice little bonus feature until After Effects gives the OneNote camera the ability to uh, link to a focus distance. But remember, that same technique will work with a two-node camera. You can use After Effects native functionality to link the focus distance to a new node, and then just use match position to animate that node wherever you want the focus in your scene. All right, that's it for now. I hope you find that match position is helpful to your unique workflow.